Okay. So um, we and I'm a, recording. I'm recording just so that we don't lose it and we can share with the other folks at least. Okay. Um, we had a great discussion. We had people from multiple continents, and um, we all shared that we all have a technical content we can't get around. So while the idea of starting from zero and building up from the ground may work in some areas in accounting, we, because of licensing regions and regulatory reasons, we have to keep certain of our technical content. But we came up with a number of ideas for enriching the learning environment. Um, and that's what we think is where we can really contribute. We came up with several ideas for modules to be inserted into traditional classes. I understand to some extent that's a saddlebag approach, but I said because of regulatory issues, that might be what we're what our best way to move forward is. Um, we also agreed that you can use Ignatian pedagogy to teach, and that would enrich the class. We came up with a number of suggestions for pedagogical strategies. I guess the key is we want our students to be more reflective, to think beyond the numbers. And in particular, we want to adopt an integrated reporting framework, which sort of equalizes financial and non-financial disclosures. So um, we actually have a working group of five of us who will continue to work on this, and we're going to treat what we have now as a living document. Excellent, Joanne. Wonderful. So five of, five, five of you are going to continue with uh, mm -hmm. more work in the near future. Thank you, Joanne. Now, let, let us go to the economics group with Tony Annett, please. I see you there. Let me unmute myself. Thank you very much. I'll be fast. Uh, we had a very interesting discussion about what a possible principles of economics um, uh, course along the new paradigm might look like. Uh, I started off by presenting some possible learning goals, which includes understanding of key economic problems of contemporary relevance, sustainability, poverty, inequality, employment, understanding the difference between the paradigm of neoclassical economics and that based on Catholic social teaching and appreciation that economics is, is about well-being central and the common good and how to develop the virtues needed to discern and make good and ethical economic decisions in both the public and private sphere. I think, um, there was broad agreement for the approach, and especially in the sense that uh, people thought that what students were looking for was definitely an approach on contemporary economic problems. Uh, they want to know, if you want to take a principles course, you want to know, you want to be able to understand the economic debates that are affecting society now. And also that, that's time dependent, right? The, the debates today are different from what they were 40 years ago or so. Um, there was a feeling that um, a lot of people thought that we needed to focus more on the ethical and the philosophical and ontological um, uh, approach to economics. So students know where economics comes from, maybe with a little bit of history of economic thought thrown in there to know that this, this didn't just fall from the sky. This comes out of a particular um, social uh, and um, uh, cultural context. And the main thought there is that economics is embedded in society, it's embedded, and today it's embedded in ecology. There was definitely a feeling that we needed much more of an, of a, of an ecological, ecological sensibility when it came to economics. And the big topic of discussion for us where there was kind of um, some divided opinion was on where, how far you diverge from the paradigm of neoclassical economics some people felt that we need a new paradigm based on Catholic social teaching and much more ethical paradigm. Others felt that you can't completely jettison the neoclassical paradigm because this is what students are expected to know, especially if they want to take other courses like intermediate and advanced macro and micro. And the, some felt that uh, the new thinking should not begin at the principles level. It needs to begin at a higher level and filter down to the principles level. So we had a very good discussion um, uh, with, very different, with different opinions on how far we should go in, in, in jettisoning the dominant neoclassical paradigm. But I, I think there was a broad um, consensus, though, that even if we teach the neoclassical paradigm, 
you also have to teach about what its flaws are and what some alternatives could be. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Difficult uh, matter uh, indeed. Your group was very international as well. Uh, are yes. there people willing to follow up? Um, I think everybody in the group is interested in following up. Yes, I, I think and I, I hope the group can, um, can, can continue and we can continue working together. But a few people have suggested to me that they'd like to follow up and I'll be reaching out to them. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Tony. Let's go to finance. I see Luis Raul here, Luis Raul Rodriguez. Hey, uh, hello. I, I'm going to be quick. Also, um, we 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 met. Uh, we was a very with a very engaged crowd, um, uh, uh, very committed to the to the discussion, and uh, we start discussing the how the goal of the firm needs to be changed uh, from maximizing profits uh, or maximizing uh, shareholder value towards uh, maximizing the common good or, 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 or some of the diverse paradigm. Um, we also discussed that this is going to be uh, quite difficult uh, because we also need to change companies for doing that because um, the, the financial manager needs also to be committed to the company and sometimes it's, it's quite difficult to do that. Um, we also talk about the the, uh, the serpent leaders, the leaders as a servant, and also um, we discuss uh, uh, how to make uh, our students uh, uh, leaders on, in changing, uh, uh, promote change within the organizations. Um, and um, also we talk about next steps. Uh, we had the, the commitment to send uh, what we have advanced to the rest of the group and uh, have their inputs uh, into that uh, in the next uh, few weeks. So we're going to have a consensual, consensual, uh, consensuated um, um, uh, syllabus or proposal for next weeks uh, with uh, a larger group. We have been four, but we I think we're going to have a little, a couple more people coming in. So uh, thank you very much for 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 the the time we have with a lot of uh, very interesting people and we from all continents. Thank you. Thank you, Luis Raul. Wonderful news. Very hard to ask, but very important. Thank you so much for following this up. Now, let's go to management with the well-known Mike Pearson. What is new? Thank you, Jose. <laughs> So yeah, we, we were discussing the things that we had uh, been suggesting and, and, and on the other hand, we, we had the luxury and the time to also just uh, connect at a deeper level with the folks that were in the, in the room and we were also a very global group. And I think um, the challenge is, is uh, how do we bring in all the various expertise points to focus on an introductory text that, that would then allow students uh, to really go back uh, and see that maybe sustainable business and all the other kind of things are really what they should and want, uh, would want to know about more. So we, we found some agreement around the, the uh, proposed learning goals and the storyline as well. And I think there's interest to continue and potentially also exchange material. Uh, so, um, uh, if Jim Joseph is here and others, maybe later on they, as a next step, they can they can say how we can potentially create that, do that, and 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 use the existing Jesuit uh, network also. Uh, I want to mention briefly: we had a number of people that were not from Jesuit schools, which was great. So we just want to be mindful that uh, this is like a process and a project that could go well beyond uh, our network. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Very nice to know that that we are becoming more diverse. That is wonderful news for all. Thank you, management group. Now let's go to a huge group, almost 40 people in the room in marketing. So Cliff, how did it go? Well, I, I could uh, say 90% of what Michael said and, and wrap up in about 15 seconds, but I'll, I'll say a little bit more. Um, my, we did have a large group. My sense was it, it went well, and I see some of my marketing friends still part of the discussion. Um, the issues with uh, 
level zero um, uh, understanding. We had actually tweaked uh, Michael's uh, articulation a little bit to make it more marketing specific, but but there was pretty quick buy-in on that straight away. Um, uh, the actualization of that um, was where we had most of our conversation from the very get-go, um, disabusing people of what marketing is, uh, getting them away from it's about selling stuff and having them be more conscientious about it's a provisioning technology to enhance well-being um, locally and globally. And uh, there was a lot of embrace for that. Uh, as the conversation continued, in my mind, two themes emerged. One was essentially, despite the fact that I find myself at a Jesuit school, and we also had some uh, participants who were not at Jesuit schools, um, despite the fact that they've self-selected into this institution, I still have to spend a lot of time teaching them how to sell stuff, how, how to do business at a very micro level. And so the big challenge is the bridge from the pragmatic to the holistic. And I think there's a lot of opportunity um, to build that bridge going forward. And uh, again, similarly to Michael, there was, a, as, the, as our conversation was concluding, gee, we, we could really use a book that sort of embraces or articulates Jesuit values vis-a-vis -vis marketing. So my sense was uh, that we had an enthusiastic group um, committed to this. And I would like to say for the record, I was uh, honored and humbled to be a part of it. And I would hope that going forward, we'll be able to work on some bold initiatives that, that might in, re lead to various storylines that tell a story we want to tell. Perhaps a book can emerge from it and um, be a template, not only for Jesuit schools, but schools around the world would be my, my ambition and goals. Thank you, Cliff. Very nice uh, agreements there. And hopefully the follow-up will come up with a nice book on marketing with Jesuit principles. We hope social so. principles. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to operations and supply chain with Cristina Jimenez uh, from Esave. Cristina. Hi, good afternoon. We were nine people in the in the session in the room. Um, we started uh, doing like a self analysis of how we were covering the knowing, doing, and being in our courses, okay? And we mostly agree that we were covering the knowing and the doing, and that we were not uh, so much uh, covering the being. Uh, we agree that uh, we need training as a faculty in operations and, and, and supply chain management, training on how to incorporate and talk about ethical dilemmas, values, etc. In, in our courses, okay? And uh, we devoted half an hour to agree on level zero learning goals, okay? So Michael, we, we were not able to go one step more, but we modify some of the learning goals, okay? And uh, most of us agree on uh, meeting after this workshop to move learning goals to level one syllabus and further okay thank you christina being a small group you might need to invite somebody else from other countries yes 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 all are welcome so you can uh, invite more people from these areas sure thank you so much now let's go to the strategy with asunta from ateneo de manila Yes, thank you. Um, we were about 10 in the group um, and uh, we uh, talked about uh, the, the, the learning objectives and uh, the direction of the course on strategy as well. And uh, there was an agreement that the strategies should expose uh, the students to a higher level of thinking, which is broader, integrative, uh, holistic and practice focused. And uh, the, the, the challenge uh, in, in the learning objectives is to be able to balance sustainable value, competitive advantage, uh, ethical decision making, and uh, in, uh, understanding the ecosystem, which means that uh, you, you might have to cooperate also with your competitors and uh, the, uh, the, the, the term of competition was, was suggested. 
Um, the, uh, we have specific uh, learning objectives, but I won't go through the details anymore, but that's the general direction of the learning objectives. For the storyline, um, uh, most of the courses on strategy are actually capstone for the undergraduate and um, sort of introductory for the graduate level. So we wanted to see how um, this could, uh, the, the, the storyline of uh, st strategic management or strategy can include uh, sustainability and ethics. So the agreement also was to still teach the tools and concepts because we still need to uh, impart the, 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 based on the expectations of the market. But what we agreed is we need to challenge the students to question how the tools can be used to reflect um, sustainability and ethics, to question even the purpose of the business. And the, the being part is we, we made sure that in each uh, module, the role of the business leader, the future business leader, if, if you will, in terms of the student, can uh, it, it will be part of the reflection of the student to look at what the role of that business leader could be in implementing the different aspects of strategy, in helping the organization uh, make ethical decisions, and so on. So uh, we also said that we could try to continue contact with each other by giving each other more ideas and support. So that's it for our group. Thank you. Excellent, Svanta. Thank you so much to the group of strategy. Let's go to information systems and analytics with Ravi. Ravi, are you there? Yes, Jose, thank you very much. Uh, we also had robust discussion uh, just like accounting and supply chain, we all somewhat technical class. So the content is fairly technical. So we, we first spent some time talking about what kind of Jesuit values can be covered in these technical classes. And we sort of agreed that issues of ethics concerning in information systems, bias introduced by data or algorithms, uh, you know, data for greater good, how can data be used for improving things in society? And the concept of misinformation, how can information be misused for different nefarious purposes? So those were kind of our course, of course there are technical content to this course, so there are other course or learning objectives as well, I won't go over them. And we spent considerable amount of time we had about 10 people in our group. Considerable amount of time, how can we implement them in the, in the, in the course itself? Uh, you know, should it be a little case analysis? What is the depth of that discussion we should have in the class? And I think we got some excellent ideas. People said you got to use current events, like COVID-19 example was given, how there is data that is, is hard to measure, hard to predict, and things of that nature. And someone else suggested some TV shows like Black Mirror is a Netflix series, which talks about the impact of technology. You know, how is technology affecting society? What are some of the issues? So we had, so we kind of came to some, I think it was excellent discussion. I would invite people, if you are interested in this topic, would like to be part of this group, you know, please email me. I'm happy to have you on the group because initial group, we only have three of us. But I think we are gonna move forward and hopefully make some progress. Thank you, Jose. I'm sending, you, I'm sending you a LinkedIn message, Robbie, as, 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 as you speak. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you all in the group, wonderful. Let us go now to ethics and social responsibility with Gerard, with Father Kavanaugh. Yeah, I, we had an excellent conversation with uh, 23 people, and uh, we began with the learning goals, and uh, generally uh, the suggestions were to make them more active. Uh, you know, make sure people have moral courage, uh, build conviction on the part of the students, uh, have creative solutions, and courage to bring change. Well, that, that does make them... <laughs> I thought we had made them more active to begin with, but this is even more so, which is wonderful. Good suggestions. 
uh, uh, we went on to the the modules uh, and, and and suggestions there were uh, uh, somewhat we wanted to take advantage of the hunger of young people recognizing that I've been teaching this stuff for a long time and so have some of the others in our group and that we really have to appeal to the young people today and uh, you know for example in our uh, uh, suggested module, you know, all of the current problems, Theranos and, and, and the rest of them. And, and suggesting is not to begin with the bad guys, but with the good guys, to give hope, to give, and, and well, I, and I think that's a, a good suggestion. Uh, and certainly to bring in the, the, the purpose of business. Uh, you know, I think we all do that, but to make it more explicit in the, uh, in the modules. And then uh, also the suggestion was, is not to imply that, uh, the free market is the way to go. I don't think we do, but we're going to have to change the wording there to make sure that it uh, that it more fits with what we should be doing. And then I would say, uh, you know, people were really wonderful when it came. Who would help? Uh, Jen Griffin asked for uh, the syllabi of people, and 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 Sarah helped. She's going to gather them all, so we're going to uh, uh, turn them in, and then they'll be available to uh, to all of us. And uh, so that, that's been, uh, been very helpful. And then, you know, once we do that and I have the emails, I'll ask which of those folks would be willing to look at the, the new learning goals and the new uh, modules uh, week by week. But it was an excellent session, many good ideas, people from very different backgrounds, and that helped. Thank you so much, Father Kavanaugh. Wonderful meeting with uh, your group. Uh, let us go now to leadership with Jake de Guzman. Jake. Hi, yes. Uh, we were 13 in the group and we took your first goal seriously, Pepe, of collaborating. So we had a very rich and deep conversations. In terms of, can you hear me? Sorry. Okay. Uh, in terms of the uh, conversations, the learning objectives, we were sort of all on the same page uh, saying that teaching leadership is really a formative class and this is where we can exercise, model, and transmit Kura personalis to our students. Uh, they cannot give what they do not experience and do not have and for us we all saw that this uh, leadership was really a formative class. In terms of the learning objectives, um, I hope I, I do justice to what we achieved. Uh, the major theme was to help that the learning objective will be the, a, a graduate that was a transformation agent at many different levels, at the personal level, at the interpersonal level with other people in organizations, transforming companies, industries, value chains, and of course, systemic wicked uh, adaptive problems um, and we thought that the anyone who goes through a leadership class in a Jesuit university in Jesuit education should become that kind of person and it's amazing that we all uh, agreed on it. Um, some other things that came out of interest were uh, we need our own textbook, we need to write uh, something for ourselves that we do not have. Um, we need to write our own cases and we'd like to move. One suggestion was, can we move forward uh, collaboratively uh, and continue this conversation? Can we share you know, materials like my, Michael has done? Uh, can we share research? Can we share our cases? Uh, in terms of next steps, there's uh, interest in first, making sure that all the notes we've put together are captured in a document and uh, again the question is for us uh, how do we proceed uh, after that so that's us for leadership thank you so much jake and the group of leadership now let us end with uh this initiative of new courses interestingly enough there were almost 20 people there molly or steve yes thank you I i'll start and molly can fill in um, as I complete. So as, uh, as was said, we had about 17 participants. Again, a very lively discussion. Our focus was a little different than the other groups because we had no 
uh, model to look at. What, what our goal was, was to discuss potential new courses that weren't part of the mix already identified. So one of the first questions that came up was this. As we think about re revising and evolving these core courses in the functional areas, and focusing on things like sustainability and social justice and allevi alleviating poverty, would it be useful to have all students take an interdisciplinary core course in something like systems thinking or the realities of the 21st century before they take these core functional courses? So that was a question that was, was posed and I think a, a good question to consider. In terms of course ideas, that surfaced during our discussion, uh, perhaps a separate course on sustainability, a course on systems thinking. We talked about realities of the 21st century as a course. Integral business ecology was identified. Social economy. And there was a lot of discussion about the need to challenge the dominant paradigm of growth that it's in, that's inherent in classical economic courses and that many students learn as they go through the curricula. We also had uh, many contributions from participants on books and resources that would be available to support some of these ideas. And I'll turn it over to Molly to see if Molly would like to add anything more to that summary. Thank you, Steve. That, that was a great summary. The only thing I would add is I really liked our discussion of this idea of we have this sort of tyranny of the three credit class and keep in mind that we can be more flexible when credit classes to credit um, context over content. And um, I've posted our notes into the folder if anyone wants to take a look. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Steve. Well, this is, this is the groups. Um, let us take a look to the next steps. Mike or Nikki, do you wanna take the lead? Well, so, so I've shared, I've shared the, the, the link to the shared folder again. We can, you know, and, and everybody can kind of update that. You can put in material uh, that's available for everybody to see. And uh, it's just like, a, like, you know, like an open common, common license kind of uh, place. <laughs> And it's really, it's really, it's really, a, you know, a co-created, uh, I think, venture for all of us that we are kind of learning and taking this forward. But I don't know, uh, I, Father Garinson, do you want to say anything on, on this, on, yeah. on next steps? Um, well, this is, oops, can you see? Uh, this has been really rich. Uh, and uh, what's re very encouraging is the number of people that want to follow up. Perhaps... Um, IAJBS as the uh, lead organization here could could think about what are some what are some next steps in terms of helping people look at the idea of creating the kind of course materials that would help them um, add to their courses enrich their courses or actually uh, a whole new kind of uh, course altogether as an introductory especially an introductory course um, the the capstone courses are 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 great for really driving home these principles, except the, it's gonna be difficult for the students to grasp them and incorporate them uh, if they haven't had some background in them in the, in the earlier courses. So I see introductory courses and capstone courses as both a place where we should, we should really concentrate our energy. But I think I'm, I, would, I would like to ask IAJBS to take the leadership here because there's, um, you know, a, a groundswell some of, of faculty interest in looking at new material. Clearly, the, the materials that are out there are not adequate, and we all know that. There's a, there's a bigger reality, a more complex reality, a new reality that we have to reach for and the present materials don't do that. So it's up to us, I think, to invent them. I'm so happy to hear people talk about that. Thank you, Father Garancini. How about you, David Majorga? Do you have any comment about taking 
the lead of the disc with our organization. You're muted. David, you're muted. David, you're muted. David, I'm sorry to don't. Thank, thank, yeah. thank you, uh, Father Ancini. Thank you, Jose. This was a very rich uh, information that we got in this uh, workshop. And uh, uh, this was a very uh, first experience. I gave you and we could continue with the uh, uh, orientation to work more in our courses at the universities. And uh, we will have a meeting in the next week. And we will work about how to um, continue this important activity. No? Uh, thanks again to all, and uh, uh, we are very happy and glad to, to have this uh, space to share our experience and also uh, um, uh, to continue no? to activities. And also, uh, I would like to, to thank to all the members of this committee. Uh, I was part of this in the last month, and it was a very good to have here uh, the opportunity to, to know more about this uh, project, about uh, the new paradigm, and we will have any many more activities about this. Thank you very much. Well, very well. Thank you all. If there is anything else to be said? Well, Good. thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Father Carancini, for the leadership. Bye-bye. Well, well, okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.